At this point in my life, I've ridden over 800 roller coasters around the world. And as much as I'd love to say that all of them were 10 out of 10s, the fact is, for every good roller coaster, there's also a bad one. But what makes a bad roller coaster? For me, I think it's a combination of a couple factors. One, the style of the ride. Some concepts just aren't that great. They may have been a cool idea, but execution fell short. It could be how well the park is maintaining it. Some rides haven't aged that well. It could also be a restraint issue or just how rough the track is. And every once in a while you come across a ride that has all of those problems shoved into one. And that's pretty much what's come together for my top 10 worst roller coasters I've ever ridden. Now I have to clarify that I am not including Katie coasters or small family rides here. I'm talking about roller coasters that are intended to thrill but something about them just isn't working and personally i don't think i would care if any of these rides got removed i know some of these rides have their cult following and that's totally fine but for me i didn't particularly enjoy my experience on any of these so let's start with our number 10 spot this is wildcat at hershey park and i know that this was the first gci i think it's clear that the company has gotten a lot better with their rides the ones they've been putting out the past couple years are awesome this was their first try at it and you know i just don't think it's aged that well i believe it has made this list because i genuinely genuinely just want this thing RMC'd. I don't think it is that great of a wooden roller coaster, and it's irrelevant in Hershey Park's lineup. They already have Lightning Racer and Comet, so if they gave this ride a makeover, they wouldn't be losing out on anything. And actually, rumors are swirling that Hershey Park might be doing something about Wildcat in the future, so maybe this ride won't be around for much longer. Now let's head down south a little bit to Six Flags America for our number nine spot. This is Firebird, and this is in a similar boat. This was the first B&M. And like GCI, B&M has gotten a lot better with their rides. Firebird has had an interesting history, however. This opened as Iron Wolf at Six Flags Great America as a stand-up coaster. It then got moved to Six Flags America as Apocalypse, again as a stand-up coaster, and then got converted into a floorless. I think with all those changes, Overs. This ride has just been through a lot. It is not running very well at all. My last ride on it was unbearably rough and uncomfortable. I just don't believe it has aged that well. I think this probably still would have made the cut if it were a stand-up coaster. I think that the fact that they removed the stand-up feature did help a little bit, but the ride still doesn't run very well at all. That and the fact that the layout isn't that great really makes this one of those rides that I just skip whenever I go to this park. Number eight, let's go to another Six Flags park. This is Six Flags Over Georgia in Great American Scream Machine. This might be one of the roughest wind roller coasters I've ever ridden. And you can tell that it needs some work because right now, as this video is being released, Six Flags Over Georgia is doing some retracking work on it. They're basically redoing the entire ending because it got so bad. So maybe after I experience it with the retracking, I will retract my statement about this ride. But as of right now, I was not a big fan at all. And I think another big problem here is this ride used to run with buzz bars. So you got a ton of airtime, but now it runs with the old trains from Georgia Cyclone. And I just didn't think that they transferred over that well. It made the experience less enjoyable. So now you don't get as much airtime and it's still rough. Just not exactly a pleasant roller coaster to experience. Coming in at number seven, let's go overseas to Blackpool Pleasure Beach. This is Steeplechase. And what's interesting about this one is this is a true family ride and it's a fun little concept. You're riding on a horse, it's a terrain coaster, but man, I did not enjoy this experience at all. I think it really came down to the profiling. Some of these turns that you just made were jolting you around. It wasn't a comfortable seating position. It kind of hurt. And I think SNS knew this because they actually came out with a concept of a reimagined steeplechase in hopes that a park would pick that up as a, here, we're trying again. As of right now, they haven't sold any. But I think this is definitely one of those instances of it was a fun idea, but I didn't think it was executed that well. And if I ever go back to Blackpool Pleasure Beach, I will be skipping this. This one. Just missing the top five are Zamperla Velares. Specifically, I want to cite Time Warp here, but I've also done Soarin' Eagle at Luna Park, and there's some more of these overseas. But I think this is absolutely one of those rides that is a weird concept, not exactly a great one, and is not executed that well. So it's just everything that you could hate about a roller coaster is thrown into here. Uncomfortable restraints rough track, bad profiling. There's a reason why Zamperla is trying to stray away from being the manufacturer that's known for making these. They're doing much better things right now. This is part of their history. They cloned this ride and sent them all over the world and they are just not fun. I think the only people that enjoy these rides are people that find 
bad roller coasters comically fun to experience, then yeah, you'd probably get a kick out of riding this thing. So now we're at our top five. Number five is Nighthawk at Carowinds. This is one of two Flying Dutchmans left by Vacoma, the other being Batwing at Six Flags America. And while I don't hate Batwing, I'm actually one of the people that enjoy the experience. I feel like Nighthawk just didn't get it right. The first half of the layout starts out the same, but then it's got an uncomfortable ending with those corkscrews. It runs significantly rougher than Batwing, and maybe it's because this one is actually a relocation. It used to operate as Borg Assimilator at California's Great America. So maybe in the relocation process, something got messed up there because this ride just does not run that well. And because it's sitting on prime real estate, I think part of my hatred for this attraction is because I know that Carowinds could do something so much better in this spot. It's right up front. You could put a really cool roller coaster here. So I'd love to see this thing get taken out. And number four, we have a mess of a roller coaster. This is Ninja at Six Flags St. Louis. This ride was started by Aerodynamics. Aero then went bankrupt partway through and so Vacoma picked it back up and finished it. It's a hybrid of the two companies and it's the worst of both of them. This is a bad layout. It's got bad trains, bad profiling. It's uncomfortable, it's rough, and it's ugly. The only part about the ride that is redeeming is it's called Ninja and so the ride's themed to beating you up, which it does. I think I'm in the same boat with this as Nighthawk where I would just love to see this thing gone because I know that Six Flags St. Louis could do something better. So now we've made it to our top three and this is what I believe to be the worst arrow ever built. This is Steam and Demon at Great Escape. It's a pretty simple layout. We've seen this layout before. Drop, vertical loop, two corkscrews, and that's it. But I don't know what happened with this ride, but it runs so bad compared to the others. I've ridden exact clones of this ride. They were just fine. Like, it's not exactly an inspiring layout. It doesn't really do too much. It's pretty basic. But for some reason, this ride is brutal. Maybe it's how the park has been maintaining the trains or something wrong with the track. I don't know. But this is a horrible roller coaster that should absolutely get taken out. The problem is Great Escape doesn't exactly have a whole lot. This is one of the only thrilling rides there, which is probably why it's not going anywhere. But geez, man, this is a bad ride. You won't catch me riding this thing again. At the number two spot, we have our second Wildcat roller coaster to make the cut. This is Wildcat at Lake Compounds, and I have no idea what happened here. This ride is an absolute disaster. It opened in 1927, so it's an old ride. And you know, I have a soft spot for old wind roller coasters. That's why you don't see too many on this list. Yeah, a lot of them aren't that great in terms of layout, but there's something about a classic that you enjoy. But this is something else. Before the 2017 season, Wildcat was fully retracked. The PTC trains were replaced by Millennium Flyers, and something must have happened in that retracking process because... I don't think it made the ride better. I think it made it worse. I heard that it didn't used to run as bad as it does now. I never got to experience it before the retracking. I've only ridden this ride once. I got off of it and said, that is horrible. I'm never doing that again. It was like jackhammering in every single valley. It made it impossible to enjoy the layout, which I mean, the layout isn't exactly that great either. So I didn't really feel like I was missing much, but get your Advil ready because you'll need it after experiencing this ride. So now we've made it to our number one spot and this is a pretty broad model. And I don't think it's going to come as a surprise to too many people. It's the Vacoma SLC. They're suspended looping coasters cloned all over the world. And I just do not enjoy these things at all, which is sad because they're actually actually pretty good layouts. The only one of these that I've actually enjoyed is the Great Nor'easter at Maurice Piers, which is actually a really good ride, so I don't consider that a part of this at all. That one got a full retracking, new trains. It shows that the layout has potential, but when these rides run with the old trains that are just claustrophobic, cause major headbanging, and with the fact that their track back then was just not designed well, this is absolutely one of those rides that you do, you're like, okay, let's get this over with. I don't want to ride it, but I'm gonna, because, you know, coaster credits. But geez, if there was ever a ride that you wanted to avoid because of shakiness, headbanging, intensity, but not the good kind, this is it. I hate these rides with a passion. I think most parks would be better off just scrapping them or do what Maurice Piers did. I know that was an expensive makeover, but it proves that you actually can have a good Vacoma SLC. But you know what? If anything, it made me respect what Vacoma's doing a lot more now because they went from making not very good rides to now producing some world-class roller coasters. So I have a lot of respect for them, but man, I hate these things. So those are the top 10 worst roller coasters in my opinion. Let me know down in the comments below what you think of these, if you agree with the points that I've made. And of course, stay tuned for more countdowns here at Coaster Studios, and we'll see you next time.